Hello, Math 098 students. Um, today, I want to go over section 3.3, which is just the, the slope formula. Okay, so here I want to show you, I want to do a video so that you can go back, rewind it, look at it again, and then take better notes. Okay, so here I have the slope formula, which is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Of course, we've been talking about slope already, which is your rise over your run. We've talked about that. So let's get started. So if you say, Ms. Thomas, well, how do I apply this formula? Okay, so let me give you an ordered pair. Okay, let's start here. And this is on page 175 if you are using your textbook to follow along. Okay. All right, I want you to find the slope. Okay. Of, let me give you two points. Let me find two ordered pairs. 8, 10, and negative 7, 14. Okay. Now, this is the formula that I want you to use, and you can use your notes when you are doing your assignment. And the more you use the formula, the more familiar you'll become. So it's y sub 2, and most students call it y2. <laughs> So it is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over, this is the division symbol on your calculator, x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Well, if you look it up here saying, well, Ms. Thomas, I don't know which one is x1, x2, so let me show you. We've already did ordered pairs uh, when we talked about graphing. That should be in your notes. So this is my ordered pair, x, y. So it tells me to slide over 8 and up 10. Remember that? The, this one, negative 7, 14 means to the left. And the elevator goes up 14, just like we talked about in class. Well, this time, instead of graphing, I want you to use the formula and tell me what the slope is. So here, since this set came first, I want you to put a 1 next to it. Since this set came behind it, I want you to put a 2 next to it. So this is always going to be the same order. X sub 1, Y sub 1. X sub 2, Y sub 2. Same order. And now we're going to substitute. Okay, we're going to plug in. Okay, so where you see y sub 2, I want you to plug in a 14. Where you see y sub 1, I want you to plug in a 10. So I'm just putting it in here so you'll know what I'm plugging in. What am I substituting in? x sub 2 is negative 7. And for x sub 1 is, bring down your minus sign, is just plain 8. So right here, let me write it over here. So I have 14 minus 10, and I have negative 7 minus 8, and the, all of that can be put in your calculator. 14 minus 10 equals 4, here in the numerator spot, okay. and negative 7 minus 8 in my calculator gives me negative 15. So this is my slope. So I know it was fairly easy, but you know, I like to give you more than um, one or two examples. Let's try another one. Okay. Example two. Okay. I want you to find the slope. Okay. And slope is in your book is a lowercase m. Okay. If you do a, a, a capital M that stands for midpoint, and we don't want you to be thinking about the midpoint. Okay. Let me give you another set of points. What about negative 3, 1, and negative 17, 2? Okay. I want you to find the slope. So you always want to write your formula. And the more you write it, the more you become more familiar with it. Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. So here, you're just plugging it in. So first, let's get this lined up. So this is my order pair, X and Y. And remember, I said this set is first, it came first, and this set came behind it. Let's put a 2 here. Now, we just want to substitute in. We want to plug in. Where you see Y2, I want you to plug in 2. Where you see Y1, I want you to plug in the number 1. Where you see X2 or X sub 2, I want you to plug in negative 17. Where you see X sub 1, I want you to plug in a negative 3. So, let's clean that up. Okay, 2 minus 1, because minus is part of the formula, and then negative 17, I have a minus sign here, and another minus sign here. 
So I have this, these are two, okay? So here, two minus one, I know it's one. Right here, a negative time of negative is a positive, just like you said. And negative 17 plus three is negative 14. This is your slope. So I know you're thinking, Ms. Thomas, there is no way it is this easy. Yes, it is, definitely um, this easy. Okay, let me find another example. I'm just flipping a page in the book. So I figured I would do a video demonstration so that you could rewind it and then come back to it. Okay, I'm just flipping through, looking to see another example that I could show you really fast. I'm looking, I'm looking through the examples right now, y'all. You know, Let's see if I see anything that's a little bit more difficult, but I do not see anything more difficult. Okay, let's try another one. You know, I love examples. What if I gave you, for example, three? Okay, find the slope of negative seven, negative five, and negative seven, negative two. Let's start there. I'm gonna scoot it over so everything is in the screen. Okay. All right, we have action, okay? So here we're gonna go back to your formula, Y2 or Y sub two, but most students call it Y2, I understand, over X sub two minus X sub one, okay? We're gonna start off with our order pair, these are my ordered pairs, X and Y, just like we talked about when we're graphing. These are points. This set came first. This set came right behind it. So now I just want to plug in. So now I'm looking for Y sub 2. That's negative 2. All right. Minus. And now I'm looking for Y sub 1, which is negative 5. Okay. And I'm going in the same order every time. Okay. X sub 2, which is negative 7, minus is part of the formula. Now I'm looking for X sub 1. Okay. Here, two negatives make a plus plus like we talked about already in chapter uh, 1 when we did chapter 2. Two negatives make a positive. Well, if I put negative 2 plus 5 in a calculator, it's going to give me 3. Negative 7 plus 7 gives me 0. Oh, well, I can't have 0 in the denominator spot. So this is called undefined, just like you remember it from school. This is undefined. I do not want a 0 at the bottom. Now, if the 0 is at the top of my numerator, I will be fine. The, the slope will be 0. And I'm going to show you an example of that as well. Okay, let's do another one. So that way you can rewind and come back and look at this again. Okay. What if I gave you 6, negative 2, and negative 4, negative 2? And I wanted you to find the slope, all right? So the more I write the formula, I'm hoping that you will see it again and say, okay, I got it, okay? But if not, you can always write it again and again, and it will come to you. Okay, so X and Y, X and Y. This is my first set, and this is my second set. It came right behind it, okay? So let me just substitute in, let me plug in. Y sub two is negative two minus is part of the formula. I'm just moving across the, the formula. Y one, or Y sub one is negative two. Here, X sub two is negative four. Minus x sub 1 is 6. Okay. Well, we know that a negative times a negative makes a positive. So anytime you have two double negatives, make it a plus. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0 here in the numerator spot. And negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10. Well, this is 0, okay? And so you can have a 0 slope and you can have an undefined slope. So when you have an undefined slope, that usually means that your line is vertical. That line is straight up and down. It looks like this. If you have a zero slope, usually your line is laying flat. We call that horizontal in your notes. Okay, and I'm hoping you wrote this in your notes. Vertical, 
lines are always going to be undefined, straight up and down. They're undefined vertical lines. So that was just a tidbit of extra information that I wanted you to have. Okay, now let me show you the next set, which is even easier. I only have a few more. The next set says, find the slope. Okay. Of each line. Okay. All right, what number was the example? Five. Okay. Now, I know these are going to seem easy, and they really are. All right, the example says, y equals... Negative 5x minus 1, and asking you what is the slope. Well, remember in class we talked about y equals mx plus b. And I told you that the m stands for what? You are right, the slope. So whatever's in front of the x is your slope. So here they're not asking you to graph. Don't add, subtract, multiply, or divide. They just want you to look. So here your answer is, oh, the negative 5, that's in front of x. Well, that is your answer. That's it. That's it. That's all they're asking for. Okay. I know that seems so simple, but I like simple. Simple is great. Okay. Let me give you another one. What if they gave you y equals negative one-fifth x plus four, and they asked you, what is the slope? You are absolutely right. Oh, is that negative one over five? It is. Absolutely. It definitely is one over four. Okay. Well, what if they gave you just plain x equals zero and said, well, what is the slope? What do you think about that? What would you say about that? Okay. Would you say undefined? Would you say the slope is zero? Okay. What would you say? Well, I would definitely say, oh, this definitely has uh, undefined. This is undefined. This does not exist. Okay. doesn't exist okay doesn't exist at all okay. you know, okay. I'm looking I'm looking okay undefined okay example eight I was looking for one a little bit more challenging what if they gave you 2x plus 3y equals 9. Remember, we talked about things being in the wrong order. So we know we're trying to get y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form, just like we talked about in class. Okay, this is slope intercept form. If they give you, this is called standard, standard form. We talked about that in class as well. If they give you a standard form and they have it in the wrong order, the only thing I want you to do is this. I want you to put this in the right order, just like we did in class. Move this 2x in front of the 9 by doing the inverse. Remember, equations need an opposite. Move 2x in front of the 9. Okay? Cross that out. Okay? And the only thing we're doing is just putting things in order. It's not in the correct order. Okay? Let me bring down that 3y. I just stuck that negative 2x in front of the 9. The only thing you did was move something around. We're just moving. It's like having the alphabets all jumped up, and you know A should go first. And even if they have M-N-O-P, you know that A is the first letter of the alphabet. So even if they rearrange the alphabet, you know the order. So this needs to be in the correct order. Okay, so it's looking better. Y equals MX plus B. Okay, it's looking better, except for with this Y, I don't want anything. I don't want a coefficient. I don't want any number in front of the Y. So I just want you to take each number, each term, and divide about whatever number is in front of your coefficient. Get rid of it. So this right here is, this is your rise over your run. This is your, exactly, your slope. And 9 divided by 3 is 3, which you're not concerned about your intercept. But here, if they ask you what is the slope, oh, my slope is negative 2 thirds. Even if they put it in the wrong order, the only thing you're doing is putting things in the correct order. That's it. If they say, well, what is your y-intercept? You know your starting point. We talked about starting points on yesterday. So here, you're like, well, where do I start? We already talked about you're going to start at 0, 3, remember? You're going to start on your y-axis. Okay, just like we talked about in class, you always start on the Y, so you would start at the 3. Okay, so if they ask you, well, what is the point? The point is 0, 3. Okay, so it's like uh, just putting those critical thinking skills um, back where they need to be. 
Okay, y'all, let me give you another example. I know this video is, is short, but I like it short and sweet. Okay, so let me give you another one. Example nine. I know this was going to be um, a pretty easy chapter section for you. I'll give you one more. What if I gave you 5x plus 2y equals 6? And I want you to find the slope. Tell me what the slope is, which is, of course, the lowercase m. So you don't have to use your formula unless they give you two points. Then I want you to tell me what is the y-intercept. Okay, let's try that. Okay, well, first, it's in the wrong order. I need y to come first. What's coming first? 5x. It's in the wrong order. The only thing you need to do is move it over. Okay, let's move. Let's move some things around. Okay, so the opposite of positive 5x is negative 5x. All right. So, I just want to move it over so that way you will see exactly what I'm doing. I did one move. The only thing I did was move my 5x in front of the 6. That's it. Okay? Next, we talked about, just like the last oh, example 8, I don't want anything in front of y. I have y equals mx plus b. Okay? So, it's, it's looking better. But now, I just need to divide every number by 2 so that I can cancel this out. And then I can have my negative 5 over 2x, which is my what? Your slope. And 6 divided by 2 is positive 3. So they ask you what is your slope. Your slope is negative 5 over 2. And your y-intercept, only if they ask you, they don't ask you the y-intercept, don't worry about it. But I just like for you to know extra. I've always been a type of teacher. I want my students to know a little bit more. Okay? This is, they ask you, well, do you know where to start? Oh, I will start on the zero three. Okay, you always start on your y axis. Okay, all right, y'all. This is the last little section I wanted to show you. I know it's not a lot. They don't have. I'm on page one eighty six in your textbook, page one eighty six, and they're asking determine based on the slope whether the given lines. are parallel, perpendicular, okay, or neither. Okay. Well, Miss Thomas, I don't even know, girl, what you're talking about. No worries. I am here to the rescue. Let me give you an example. Example 10. If I gave you y equals 3x plus 2, and y equals 3x minus 5. And I asked you, are these lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? What you're looking for is, well, what is the m? What is the slope? Okay. Oh, well, the slope here is 3, and the slope here is 3. If, the, if you have the same slope, same x, this is a parallel line without even having a graphic. These lines are going to be parallel. Same slope, parallel. Easy breezy. Okay. Well, Ms. Thomas, show me when it's perpendicular. What perpendicular says, okay, and this is when the lines cut each other. So one line will go here and the other line, will, it'll cross like an intersection. Okay. This is what perpendicular lines look like compared to parallel. Okay. Well, the only way you're going to be able to get a perpendicular line is if one of them is can be 3x plus 2 but the other one is going to be in the book they call the negative reciprocal and let me show you you already know what negative means and you know reciprocal means to what flip okay so here i have m equals 3 the only way that this is going to work is i'm able to negative it put a negative in front of it and flip it. Well, Miss Thomas, I'm going to flip three. How would you flip three over one? You write one over three. This is the only way you're going to be able to say, oh, they are perpendicular. They took the my slope, flipped it over, and stuck a negative sign in front of it. Negative reciprocal. Okay? So this is like um, not really... Something you can memorize. Well, it's something that you're going to have same slope, perpendicular, negative reciprocal, same slope, parallel, my bad, same slope, parallel, 
Negative reciprocal perpendicular is one or the other. Okay? So wait, let me show you. Let me give you that was 10. You know I love examples. Okay. All right, let me show you. What if I had one of my slope is um, let's see, one fourth. And my other slope is four. Can you tell me whether is it parallel? Is it perpendicular? Is it neither one? Okay. But well, let me tell you what it's not. Okay. All right. So in order for this to be parallel, they both have to be exactly the same. One fourth and one fourth. It can't be one fourth and four. Okay. Well, mm -mm, Miss Thomas, it's not that. Perpendicular says I have to be able to be able to flip it over and stick a negative sign in front of it. Ain't no negative signs in front of this. Mm -mm. This one right here is a neither. So sometimes it'll try to throw you off. Okay. Let me give you another one. What if I told you the slope is four and another slope is four? Is it parallel? Is it perpendicular? Okay. Is it neither? Automatically, your mind should go, oh, Miss Thomas, they have the same slope. This is going to be the easiest one that you do. Same slope, circle parallel. Okay. All right. Let me give you one more. What about... um? Y'all, I'm thinking, what about two-thirds and the other one, negative three over two? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay, so you're looking at the slope. Okay, so is it the same? Mm -mm. All right, well, we know not parallel, Miss Thomas. Well, can I flip it over? Did they stick a negative sign in front? Okay, so let's look at this. They got two thirds. What is the reciprocal? Can I flip? What's, what's, what if, when I flip over two over three? Is that three over two? Yes, it is. All right, they flipped it over. Well, did they stick a negative in front of it, Miss Thomas? Yes, they did. Okay, this is perpendicular. Okay, and that's without you having to graph it. And this is on page 186 in your book if you need to see more. So I don't want to make the video too long. Um, because I wanted you to be able to stop it, rewind to stop it, because I know this was a really easy section, but I wanted to also put it on a video. So have a wonderful day, students, and I hope this helps you with parallel, perpendicular, and slope of a line.